How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and I'm excited to talk to you about PCI Express 5.0 SSDs, the brand new NVMEs that will be featured in AMD's Ryzen 7000 series. And it has already been brought up on Intel's side on the 12th generation and up. You're talking about speeds that are gonna be faster than 7,000 megabytes per second. You will see double the speeds when it comes to PCI Express 5.0. Having data transfer rates this quick is something to take advantage of. Let me get to the first point here that it may not be as useful for gamers currently. I know Microsoft wants to take advantage of direct storage, but there are very, very, very few games out there that does have that kind of feature. So you won't really see the advantages of this speed, but it's great for people out there who are media creators or graphic designers, because you will need those type of speeds when you are working on creating projects. The first one that kind of leaked out some information is Samsung with the 990 Pro. You have the MZV9 P1T0 and you also have the MZV9 P2T0. The nines kind of give away that number and you can kind of figure out the one for one terabyte, the other two for two terabyte. When Samsung does come out with their brand new SSDs for PCI Express 5.0, you can count on Samsung using their 3D NAND technology. The great thing about having 3D NAND is it's super reliable and you don't really have to worry about failures. More than likely, if you're looking for MLC, it's probably not going to be the case unless it's going to be this really crazy expensive and there's very few SSDs out there that do feature MLC, more than likely it will be a TLC based SSD. Now, when it comes to PCI Express 5.0, this is not new to Samsung. The first one they actually created was the PM1743. The PM1743 was up to 14.3 gigabytes in storage. And this is more for enterprise use and it is usually installed in servers. It has a very different form factor, which is EDSFF. And more than likely, it's not gonna be a drive that anybody can just go try to purchase it because it's gonna be mad expensive. Samsung did say that their drives can go up to 13 gigabytes per second, while the random read speeds could go up to 2.5 million input and output per second. The write speeds are supposedly significantly improved over its prior generation. So you can expect in every single way, it will have no problem beating out PCI Express 4.0 NVMEs. What kind of form factor will it be? Will it be either MLC or TLC? And most importantly, how cool will the storage be? Because with these type of speeds, you can expect the heat for the SSDs to heat up even more. Because just like the PCI Express 4.0s back then, you actually had to install an external cooler. More than likely, these new NVMEs will get pretty hot, especially for how fast they can read and write. If it needs a cooler to be installed for these NVMEs to be more compatible, that you can't reach a certain temperature, because we all know what would happen if you reach too high of a temperature when it does come to NVMe, go to that inevitable blue screen of death if it does not have enough of a cooling source, because we all know how hot NVMEs can get for PCI Express 4.0. More than likely, it's gonna have to find an active cooling solution with these new NVMEs, and more than likely, these motherboards will be a lot more passively cooled, so we won't really have to worry about the issues on the desktop wise. More than likely, it will run into more issues when it comes to more of compact factors, such as mini ITX or micro ITX boards. You will probably have more issues with that or a laptop because you're gonna have to find a way to cool. There's a couple suggestions by Fission who wants to also create PCI Express 5.0 SSDs going from 16 nanometer to seven nanometer, which will reduce the channel total. And another recommendation is if that doesn't work, they also recommend a new type of connection when it does come to PCI Express 5.0 which is a larger bus so it can dissipate heat quicker compared to having a smaller bus for your M2 drives. Depending on how large your PCI Express 5.0 SSD is gonna be, it will require one extra watt when it comes per gigabyte of speed in order for your SSDs to reach that type of speed and to function properly. Now you can see why it needs more of a cooling solution. It was also brought up that usually when it comes to NAND technology, that it can operate perfectly well between 75 to 85 degrees Celsius. 
Just like any other technology, if it takes too much heat, it will affect the integrity of your SSD, especially PCI Express 5.0. The limit it can only really reach is about 80 degrees Celsius. Anything above that can cause critical damage to your PC component, and it can cause it to lose its memory, which is something that nobody really wants. And to bring up that subject again real quick about the 16 nanometer to 7 nanometer nodes, it can be done, but the only problem is it will be more costly if that is manufactured in that way. Uh, you can keep the nodes cooler, because if you think about it, if you have so many nodes, it can uh, dissipate the heat throughout the SSD. It can also operate higher frequencies with lower voltage and all that extra good stuff that would be available. Of course, all this is really unknown and this is all theoretical, until PCI Express 5.0 does come out and we can see what type of issues that can possibly come up. So fam bam, guys, what do you think of Samsung's new 990 Pro? Is it something that you want on your wish list when it comes to your PC build or is it an upgrade that you're thinking about if you're already on a new system? Let me know in the comments down below. If you know anybody else who is interested in PC building or PC tech, make sure you share this very video with them, especially if they're excited about PCI Express 5.0, just like we are. And if you're not part of the big, wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.